Now let's see the next solid structure which is called a cone. Now we all know the cone. We are quite familiar because we eat ice cream inside a cone. Now let's see how that cone is constructed for the areas. A cone is generally in the shape of a sharp object at one end and then circular at the bottom. So this is the shape of a cone. A birthday cap is also the shape of a cone. So when I take this cone in this, if I take a larger object off, then clearly I get this to be a solid cone which I get and here the radius of the cone is R and the height of the cone is H <coughs> is how we have the dimensions the radius is R and the height is H and this is called a right circular cone because here the radius is always perpendicular to height. So a cone is also called a right circular cone because this is 90. It is called right circular cone with radius r and height h. Now as I consider this in the similar manner as I have considered the cylinder, let me see what are the different faces it has for finding the curved surface area or the total surface area. As I see that the base is a circle and the upper part is a curved surface, therefore I understand that this is having two of the regions, one is the curved part on the top and the other is a circle in the bottom. Repeat. Now in this case, I take a cone with radius height r and height h and also I consider the slant height which is L. So in this case we have to remember R is the radius of the cone, H is the height of the cone and L is its slant height which helps us in finding the curved surface area. The slant height is the height which is considered slantily on the side. It is the hypotenuse of the right angle triangle, say I take this as OAB. If this is a right angle triangle OAB inside, then the distance AB will be the slant height, which is the hypotenuse of right angle triangle. Now, as I see this three dimensional cone, let's see how the curved surface area or the curved part of the area can be formed. Now, here let me take the curved surface part of the cone and see how this becomes in the shape in its two-dimensional shape when it is put on a flat sheet. So imagine I remove the curved part of the cone and I just stretch it to lay down on the ground and see what exactly the shape is. Before doing that I would like to have a small activity with the paper. Now let me take a A4 size paper which is in the rectangular shape. Imagine this is the length and this is the width of the rectangular sheet. Now as I can make a cone with this, if I just roll this in the form, I can form a cone as many of the shop vendors try to do this by putting something in and giving us. This is the curved surface of a cone. Now how did I obtain the curved surface of this cone? If I just put it here and I put the triangle, the circle down in the base, this forms a cone, the top surface or the curved surface. So indirectly, we assume that when a rectangular sheet of paper is rolled, I can form the curved surface area of a cone. Therefore, to get the curved surface of a cone, I stretch it. When I stretch the curved surface, I get a rectangle. So let's see how the dimensions of the rectangle would be. This is the rectangle I get when I stretch the cone. Now this is the length and the width, so using the dimensions of this, as I see that the base is a circle, exactly when I stretch, I get the base of the circle plays a role in identifying the dimensions. As I clearly see that the width is L because 
the slant height is given to be L of the sheet of the curved surface path. So this L acts as the width when I stretch it on the ground flat. And here, as I see that, <laughs> when I stretch, I get half of the circumference which gets stretched on when I put on the ground, the, the half of the circumference which is on the base becomes pi r because for the semicircle, the circumference is pi r, that is pi r into L. So in this case, if I wanted to find area of the curved surface path, is nothing but finding the area of the rectangular sheet. So in this, my CSA is nothing but area of rectangle which I have obtained here, which is nothing but pi r into L, that is pi r L. So my curved surface area is pi r L is what we get. Similarly, if I wanted to find the total surface area is nothing but pi r l plus the area of the circle which is missing here, that is pi r square, the base which is a circle, which on simplification gives pi r into r plus l. Therefore, the TSA of a cone is pi r into r plus L is what is obtained. So the curved surface TSA and are the different dimensions are the different areas which are existing in the cone. Similarly the volume. Now what is the volume of cone? Now the volume of a cone is given as 1 by 3 pi r square h. This is the formula for volume of a cone which is obtained from a cylinder usually I have if I construct a cylinder I can construct a cylinder from a cone in this way so this is cone is a part of a cylinder which is one third because one two three there are three cones which are combined to form one cylinder therefore volume of a cone is one third of volume of a cylinder this is how I get this one third of volume of cylinder which is pi r square h and hence volume of a cone is 1 by 3 pi r square h is how we understand the properties of the cone.